Okay. So, uh, first I want to thank uh, the organizers to, for inviting me. It's the uh, second time I've been here. It is a great pleasure. Yeah, so this, I always put this to scare people. <laughs> and uh, just to, yeah. So the, uh, I, I really apologize because I, I, I gave this talk uh, several times this year and uh, the end of last year. So there are a few improvements. So it's most, mostly a survey uh, 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 talk about uh, uh, work that has been done uh, in the last few years. So I, I'll get back to this table. Okay. So let, let me review what uh, geometric structures uh, are. Uh, probably you've seen last week uh, the definitions. So I have a, a Lie group G. I didn't say semi-simple, so just a, a general Lie uh, group acting on a, a space X. And uh, M is a manifold, and a G uh, X, X, X structure, or M, is uh, a covering of M by uh, charts which have value in X. Uh, once you have a, a GX structure, you have a developing map defined on the uh, universal covering of M. And you get uh, a holonomy representation, a representation of uh, the fundamental group of M into G. So uh, satisfying this compatibility condition, uh, the, uh, the developing map and the holonomy representation. Uh, okay. So to, to recall the definition of Adolfo, is what is a, 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 a GX structure is uh, uniformizable if you can write M as uh, uh, an open set of X uh, quotiented by gamma, gamma acting properly discontinuous. Okay. So the, the uh, standard examples are uh, hyperbolic structures. This is the most famous, maybe, uh, example. And uh, uh, conformal structures. This is another example. Real projective uh, structures. Um, so uh, a question is fixing uh, um, a GX structure, uh, uh, G and X describe uh, the uh, GX structures on M. So a problem which is more general is just describing representations of the fundamental group in 2G. But you, you don't have a geometric structure, but at least you have a representation in 2G. Uh, so this can be seen as a first step to trying to find a, a geometric structure on M. Um, huh? oh. So uh, uh, I'll I would define, I have to define what is a representation variety. So uh, uh, as a variety, I, I would choose a, an algebraic group. So it, it could be any of those, SL2R or SL2C or SL3C, etc. cetera. And uh, uh, I would call HOM of gamma G the set of all representations of gamma into, into G. And uh, as G acts on uh, home of gamma G in the set of all representations by conjugation, uh, I can take the quotient. The quotient is non hausdorff in general. So uh, there is a trick to define a, uh, an algebraic variety, which is called algebraic quotient, which I, I won't describe, but it's uh, uh, you can just forget about these two parallel bars. So why study character varieties of a fundamental group? Um, there are many reasons. I think 
during the, the, those two weeks, uh, uh, you've seen many uh, examples of uh, deformations of uh, geometric structures uh, since uh, those uh, unknown people until so, Uh, th there is this phenomenon of r rigidity um, theorems, Weil, uh, Mostel, which was mentioned today uh, in the morning, and there are interesting, more, more interesting uh, recent uh, results where the representation variety or, or the character variety can give you informations about the topology of the manifold itself. So it's the work of color shaling. Okay. So I get to the point, so PGL3C. So I, I want uh, to, uh, to obtain uh, uh, geometric structures from PGL3C. So uh, PGL3C is too big. The uh, dimension, complex dimension is eight. Uh, but uh, th there are interesting uh, real forms in PGL3C. That means uh, uh, subgroups of PGL3C uh, whose uh, Lie algebra, whose complexified uh, Lie algebra uh, gives you the Lie algebra of P PGL3C. So uh, I'm enumerating them. There are exactly three, PU3. PU to one, which we love most, uh, some people here, and uh, SL3R. So PU3 is not uh, related to any geometry, the, uh, to any geometric structure, in fact, on three manifolds. But uh, those two PU to one uh, are related to cauchy riemann structures and SL3R to real flex structures. I'll, I'll explain in, in a minute those structures. So, um, so I don't want uh, just to find representations into PGL3C as the title of the talk uh, uh, pretends. I, I want really to find geometric structures on three manifolds. So that's why uh, uh, those three groups, uh, the, 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 especially the two uh, non-compact groups are uh, very important. So the, uh, the main, uh, the main uh, idea behind that is that actually those two geometries, PU21 and SL3R, uh, could be related to a geometrization of contact structures in, in dimension three. So I, I'll just briefly describe that those two geometries, and they're related to contact structures, each of them. Moreover, there is a natural embedding of PGL2C into PGL3C, which, uh, uh, which is the reducible representation of PG, PGL2C into PGL3C. So in, in a way, uh, hyperbolic geometry is uh, somewhere uh, inside this, uh, this, this group. So what I'm going to do is the following. Uh, the, the whole technique is uh, I'll try to triangulate a manifold. Here it's a, it's a, a, a toy model in, in two dimensions. So it, I'm taking the punctured torus. The punctured torus is triangulated by two triangles. And uh, here the uh, uh, I want to uh, realize that, that topology geometrically, and geometrically means uh, realizing each triangle as a, um, as a geometric triangle. Right. So that, I, I think this picture uh, explains what I'm going to do in three dimensions. So you, you have to think uh, the, the rest of the talk is an analogy of this, uh, this drawing, right. simply. Um, so let, let me recall for those who didn't see it, what, what is uh, CR geometry. No, CR structures, it's PU to one 
uh, 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 acting on S3. S3 is the boundary of uh, a, a complex ball of dimension 2. So this group uh, can be viewed as a, the isometry group of the complex ball, as in the talk of Martin uh, yesterday. But it can be seen also as a conformal, sort of a conformal uh, group acting on the boundary of S3 by analogy to real hyperbolic space and uh, the isometric group acting on the boundary, CP1. So it's the, it's the same idea. So it's, it's a geometry which is not uh, Riemannian. So it's, it's not in the, in the scheme of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the talks in the first, uh, in the morning, because in the morning we had a volume form which should be invariant under the group. So the, it, it, it's, not, um, it, it's not Riemannian or, or pseudo-Riemannian. And the real flag structures are, uh, it's a GX uh, uh, structure, SL3R, everybody knows. X is the, it has to be a three-dimensional manifold. And the, this three-manifold is uh, the set of flags in RP2. So flags in RP2 is just, um, so RP2, if I, if, if I make a drawing of RP2 here, is RP2, and I just take a, a point, P, and a line. So it's, it's a, the set of all those pairs. So it's, it has to be pairs PL, P in RP2, and uh, L, uh, I think a line uh, in the dual space of, of RP2. This is um, a three manifold, this space. And you can think of it as SL3R divided by the upper triangle matrices. So the upper triangle matrix, so just to make this uh, clear, so if you, if you have a line in RP2 belonging to, so this is a line in RP2, in RP2 uh, belonging to a, a plane in RP2. If you want to fix uh, uh, the line and the plane, then you need, um, you need a, a matrix uh, which is like this, upper triangle matrix. So this belongs to Borel group, okay? Is it? So th those are the two contact, homogeneous contact structures uh, which uh, are supposed to, uh, to uniformize or, or to uniformize all contact structures on, on three manifolds. So, uh, so I, need, uh, I need to talk about flags in order to uh, to to um, put those to two geometries together. So instead of t uh, of talking about real flags, I'll do all the computations with complex flags. So I'll put the two geometries together. So um, so uh, uh, the the space of flags in CP two is just one point in in CP two, and a uh, a line passing by uh, uh, that point. And there is an action of SL3C on the space of flags. And uh, the, 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 the space of flags is a homogeneous space then, SL3C here, uh, divided by the Borel group. It's the same thing, but uh, as in the real case, complexify. So, uh, it's interesting to, uh, to observe that if you have CP2, now, CP2, 
uh, you, you can obtain a conic. So let's see. This is a conic a CP1 inside uh, CP2. And each point of a conic determines a, a complex line, which is tangent to that conic. So uh, the embedding of CP1 into CP2 uh, defines an embedding of CP1 into the space of flags. So uh, here uh, I, I, I'm, I'm writing, I just defined a, a map from CP1 to the space of flags. And the same thing for S3. So if I have S3 contained in CP2, I just take a a tangent line passing through this, a tangent complex line passing through one point. So I obtain a map from S3 to the space of flex. So there, there are those two cases which are related to CR structures and um, hyperbolic geometry. And there is a further map. If I take a real A real conic. Sorry? Yeah, I, I, I'm taking any conic. A quadric, yeah, a quadric in, in CP2. And this defines a natural map of CP1 into the flex. Just take the tangent line. Okay, RP2. So I can I can I have all those maps, okay. Um, so uh, I want to now to to describe triangulations, and in order to describe triangulations, I I, I will describe triangulations of uh, flags uh, by by flags. That is, I, I have to take configurations of flags in CP two. So uh, the, the action of SL3C is transitive on, on the set of generic pairs of flags. So we do a drawing and everything will be clear. So if I take two flags like this in CP2, uh, there is only one up to uh, up to SL3C. But uh, if I take, uh, if I take uh, three flags now, so if I take three flags, there is one complex invariant. So this is uh, zero dimensional. This is one dimensional. And if I take four flags, that's what I need to define tetrahedra. Then you, did, you need, uh, so if I take four like this, so any, any configuration of, uh, of four flags, this is four dimension. So this is very classical. People in the 19th century were, were dealing with this. And we are done to, uh, to define uh, triangulations. So uh, in order to parameterize those configurations, uh, there is a, 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 classic, a classical way. It's by cross ratios. So all those things are, 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 are very classical. There is a way to, uh, if you have four points in, uh, in CP2, you can imagine all the lines passing through the first point. So one, so here, so the, I, I imagine lines between the, between the points. And uh, take all the lines passing through uh, the first point, right, one. In fact, as I'm dealing with flags at point one, 
I have also a line passing through it. So actually, I have four lines passing through one point. And all the lines passing through one point is just CP1. So I have uh, four points in CP1. Once you have uh, this uh, one configuration of four flags. And this defines the cross ratio. So x denotes the cross ratio of uh, those four lines passing through the same point. So, so in this way, you, you get a lot of numbers. So a lot, a lot of cross ratios associated to many configurations. So there, there are too many numbers. Uh, you, because it, it depends on how you, you choose the order of those lines. Right? So it's, uh, it's huge, the, all, all those numbers. But I, I said that uh, the dimension is four. If you have four uh, flags, you just have four, di four dimensions. So there are relations between those numbers. And I, I can write uh, down the relation. It doesn't matter. So I'll skip. Uh, those relations, they are classical relations. We don't care. So let me, let me uh, uh, start again with the same picture of the puncture torus, but now in three dimensions. So the, the most uh, classical example is the figure eight knot. Uh, it's an example of non-compact three manifold. And this is a famous uh, um, uh, triangulation of the complement of the figure eight knot that nobody understands. So uh, I, I won't explain. So uh, there is this uh, configuration with uh, uh, gluings of sides that uh, you have to spend some years understanding. And uh, uh, so we have uh, what we call an ideal triangulation of M. That is, I, I have M as a truncated gluing of tetrahedra. T there is our tetrahedra. So if you, if you see here, though, here you have just two tetrahedra. And uh, uh, yeah. so I will decorate this, dec uh, this uh, triangulation. The decoration means that I'm going to put at each vertex of the uh, uh, ideal t uh, conf uh, configuration, ideal uh, triangulation, I associate a, a, a flag. So that, that's a decoration. So I put a flag at each uh, vertex. And if I do that coherently, then I get for free uh, a representation into PGL3C of the fundamental group. So uh, you can think of this as a black box, but you can imagine how to do because uh, everything, all the flags are coherently glued. So when you follow a path along your manifold, you make uh, uh, gluings of, uh, of uh, uh, flags and uh, gluings of flags are done by this PGL3C. And you obtain this map. So this gives you a holonomy, sort of a holonomy representation. But I didn't have any structure. I, I just have very coarse uh, data to define uh, this map. So when I, I have gluings, so for instance, when I have a, a gluing of a face, uh, so I have, I have a triangulation. So I have one, uh, one tetrahedra here, and uh, here there is another one. So let, let's suppose that, that that face here, it's glued with this one. But it, for that face, I have three flags, F1, F2, F3. For that one, I have, uh, let's say, F1. Let me be F1 prime. 
F2 prime, F3 prime. So I have three flags, and three flags have to be glued together. So you have to be careful that uh, three flags forms a configuration of three flags form a one parameter, has a one parameter uh, uh, space. So uh, you have to, to be at the same point of this one parameter space. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. You have uh, more equations. I'll come back. Uh, yeah, I'll come back to this. Yeah. It it could be uh, just uh, sorry. What? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's, uh, it's uh, in fact it's c minus uh, a couple of points. So it's it's a very simple space. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, you have a, a boundary holonomy. This manifold has a boundary. So uh, you have a, a representation of, of the boundary of the uh, manifold into PGL3C. And I will suppose that the boundary has just uh, 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 one component, and it, it's a torus. In, the, in that case, uh, I, I impose that uh, the uh, boundary holonomy preserves one flag. To preserve one flag, I have to, to have the uh, boundary holonomy, which is a, a z plus z. So it has two generators. It has two generators here. Uh, it's a abelian group. So uh, I will impose that the, the two uh, matrices corresponding to this representation are uh, in, in, the, in a Borel group. They preserve a flag. So uh, another way to think about this, uh, a more formal way to think about this uh, decoration, is uh, to think of, uh, uh, of all the cusps in the boundary of uh, three manifold. Let's say it's a hyperbolic uh, for that sake, uh, for that example. And uh, I, I associate to each cusp a flag in an equivalent way. So uh, I have a map from uh, cusps to flags in such a way that uh, th there is a, 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 it's equivalent. So I want, uh, it is a very formal uh, uh, definition of a, of a decorated representation. I won't use this, uh, uh, this uh, definition much. I just want to stress that uh, if you have a representation, of the fundamental group of a manifold into PGL3C, you can associate a decoration, a decorated uh, representation. And uh, this, uh, the boundary holonomy will fix a flag. So again, I repeat uh, bigger uh, the, the, uh, the matrices that uh, should be, uh, uh, they will be very important in the, in the following. So those coordinates uh, using decora uh, decorated uh, representation were used in the, in, uh, by Fogg Goncharov to analyze higher Teichmuller space in the case of surface groups. And uh, they were also studied in, in a very similar way by Garofalidis, Thurston, and Zickert. And they were generalized to PGL and C by Garfales, Gordner, Zika, Dimofte, Gabriel, and Gautier. So there are many uh, uh, activity 
on, on, on those uh, um, uh, coordinates because they give uh, very useful uh, um, parameterizations of uh, representations. So let, let me explain some applications of them. So the first application is a definition. No, they are, they are mathematicians. Yeah, they, they are mathematicians. But Gabella, Gabella is a physicist, and um, Dimofte is a is a physicist. Dimofte, yeah, maybe you know. So the first uh, application is, is the definition of the volume of a representation. Here, the, the volume is is not co uh, compared to what uh, it was explained in the morning because you you don't have an invariant volume form. So you have to do something uh, different. It, it, uh, I was surprised that there was a, a volume in, the, in this case because the, the geometry is not uh, Riemannian. So as Ruth uh, uh, explained before, the, the dialog algorithm uh, appears um, usually in the, in the forms for, for the volume in three dimensions. And uh, if you have a gluing of uh, tetrahedra, you just sum the dialog, dialog algorithm function on each of those coordinates, cross ratios that I introduced before. It seems to be very uh, ad hoc, but it's, uh, it's, very, um, it's very natural in a way because, uh, because of the properties of the dialog algorithm. So this volume is well defined, and uh, it was defined by many people and in several uh, generalizations. So there are many, many ways to do it. So I, I listed all, all, all the people because I know I'm filmed, so uh, it's a bit dangerous, yeah. So a second application is uh, a combinatorial proof of uh, this uh, result of Menard Ferrer and Porti which says that if you, if you start with a, a hyperbolic manifold, uh, M, and you have a representation, uh, the, the geometric representation of the fundamental group into PGL2C, that is the uh, discrete faithful representation, which gives you a hyperbolic structure, then you can compose with the uh, irreducible representation of PGL2C into PGL3C. And you get a point in the character variety. You get a point in the character variety here. And the theorem says that uh, it's a smooth point of complex dimension 2. So this... Uh, 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 the, the, we can prove this uh, using this uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, this parameterization, and uh, in fact, the eigenvalues of the boundary holonomy uh, parameterize the character variety. So, if you choose two eigenvalues in the in the boundary holonomy, this parameterizes locally. The character variety. So, for those who know uh, Thurston's uh, the, the representation into SL2C, this is very natural to to think. Uh, yeah, uh, I didn't say this. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so it is uh, uh, here. Let go be the manifold with boundary a torus, just one, just one. So for uh, PGLNC, uh, GU uh, generalized this result, and Menafer uh, Parti uh, other methods. Right? Okay, so a third application is a generalization of a formula of uh, Neumann's Agier. So th this uh, formula says that uh, don't don't be uh, afraid. So I. I so first, you have to just see this. Uh, this is a funny notation for this. In fact, you have two functions, f and g. And I just want to, to say that I, I'm, 
I'm multiplying log of g times the differential of log of f, and I, I'm doing this. So uh, it's, uh, just forget this, this thing and think you have this formula. So the formula of, uh, the, that we obtain says that the derivative of the volume is equal to this. So see, the important thing is that it depends only on the eigenvalues of the boundary holonomy. S is uh, uh, the number, uh, the cusps. So here I'm, I'm, I'm summing over, over each cusp. And each cusp, I have this, uh, those eigenvalues. And I do this. It's a fantastic formula because it's, it says that, for instance, if A, if, if if the diagonal is, uh, is um, 1, so if it's unipotent, if you know that the eigenvalues are 1, then you see the formula, you have log of 1 always, which appears. So this is 0. So for unipotent representations, uh, the volume is a critical point. Critical point. So the volume, uh, th there is a notion of volume of a representation. In the, in the, uh, if the representation is in the P PSL2C, it coincides with the hyperbolic uh, volume. If not, it's something. It's a volume of a representation. It's, uh, it's, it's defined combinatorially using the dialog uh, dialogarithm, your sum over tetrahedral. There is a notion of volume and uh, uh, which behaves well. <laughs> PGL and C in general, yeah. In general, yeah. It's a, uh, the, uh, for for finite for uh, for uh, compact manifolds, it's the pullback of a cohomology class. But uh, if it's an open manifold, it's not. You cannot do this. But uh, that's what I, I was going to say. Um, Bucher, Burger, Yodzi, they, they, they managed to define using bounded cohomology, this, this, this volume, which is, I think, is the best definition of, uh, of, the, um, of this volume. And they obtained this uh, wonderful result that uh, says that the volume is maximal if and only if the representation is the geometric one. So if you have a, a three-manifold, hyperbolic three-manifold, then you know that the unipotent uh, representations, boundary unipotent representations are critical points. And uh, what they prove is that the, there is a maximum, which is precisely the, the one which comes from the geometric representation. OK. okay. The geometric representation, so I, I, I go back a, a couple of, uh, come on, is this one. So if you have a, a hyperbolic manifold, you have a natural P, uh, representation in PGL2C, and then you compose with the, uh, so you call this ge geometric representation. This is the maximum volume. So this is very interesting, uh, but uh, we don't understand really how this volume the volume is a function, how it behaves in the character variety. So in particular, we, we can show that uh, the volume is zero if, uh, if uh, in representations in PU21 and SL3R. So I, I, I'm saying too, too many things, so I, I'll continue the, <laughs> the, um, the slides. So those are, were applications. Now, how to compute? explicitly the character variety, how to do that. So it's very hard to compute. Uh, you can imagine that you, you have to do um, some uh, tricks. If you are lucky, sometimes you are lucky, then you can get uh, uh, explicitly uh, the representations. So le let me show you how to do it uh, with brute force. So you, you use uh, coordinates, the cross ratios. So you, you, you do what uh, Thurston have, has done. He, he writes uh, cross ratios. 
and he impo imposes uh, compatibility conditions. The compatibility co conditions are phase equations. So when, uh, when two phases are glued, the three, tri three ratios have to coincide. So that, that, that's what it means, this equation. And you have edge equations, as, as you said. When you, you do a full turn around an edge, uh, you have to go back to the same point. So it's, uh, for those who have seen um, uh, real hyperbolic geometry, you, you remember those equations in, the, in, in, in Thurston's notes. But if you, if you didn't see that, you, you just uh, have to write those equations. And I will write for, for you the, in the case of the figure eight knot. So I return to the figure eight knot, and I write all the equations I need. I put the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, parameters, and I write them. Uh, it's too much, right? It's, uh, it's a lot of equations. It's, um, but here, here are the edge equations, phase equations. And here, uh, it's a computation. You, you can compute the eigenvalues of the boundary allonomy. So there, there are two generators. So there, there are uh, four eigenvalues uh, in total. So let's compute. So th this is a, a, a diagram of what you should do. <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh, you should triangulate the manifold. I repeat what, what, what uh, we are doing. You should put the coordinates zij. You, you write the equations. You, you solve them numerically or uh, with uh, Grobner basis. And if you do this, what I told you, there is this black box, I, I get representations. Right? And then after the representations, uh, we, can, we could go further and try to get uh, geometric structures. structures. So it's, it's really brute force. Uh, let's try to do this. So um, the first case is when uh, the eigenvalues are 1. So it's the unipotent case. So it's, a, it's, a, it's not the full character variety, but uh, it's part of it. It turns out that uh, turns out that there are very few solutions. So there are the hyperbolic solutions, which were obtained by Riley and later by Thurston. And then there are some a finite number of CR solutions. CR solutions meaning that the allonomy will have values in PU to 1. So uh, here is the, the group. This is the fundamental group of the figure 8 knot. It has this uh, presentation. There are two generators. And I'm, I, 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 I will not write the uh, hyperbolic solution, real hyperbolic solution. I write only the uh, CR solutions. There are three. You, you, you can write down. So probably you don't care. They're just matrices you get at the end. You get representations. What to do with the representations? Uh, well, that's what uh, uh, Pierre Ville was, uh, was saying. Once you have representations, he described the beautiful parameterization of, uh, of the Whitehead link uh, representation variety. And the question is, what representation corresponds to a geometric structure? Who, who knows? So let, let, let me briefly say what, uh, what we know about uh, this case. So uh, the, for the first one, uh, I analyzed many years ago. Uh, but it's a, it's a very strange representation. It's infinite index subgroup uh, on, uh, of a lattice. So, but uh, the limit set is S3 itself. So it's, 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 a, it's a very strange, uh, and uh, we don't know if it corresponds to a holonomy of a geometric structure. On the other hand, the other two, so the, this was analyzed by uh, Dero and uh, Ji Yan Wang. Uh, it, it has 
it's a very beautiful representation. It's, uh, in fact, it's a triangle group of type 334. And in, in fact, it's uniformizable, as, as uh, Pierre uh, explained in his talk. Remark, so in fact, uh, there are other structures, uh, branched and maybe not non-branched, which have, which have the same holonomy. Uh, we don't understand why. Um, another remark is that uh, they all continued and he analyzed other deformations. Uh, the, 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 he analyzed uh, uniformizations of deformations of this uh, representation. And uh, this was for the figure eight knot, but uh, uh, well, historically, Schwartz found, as uh, uh, Pierre Ville explained, the first geometric uh, SU21 structure on, on, the, uh, on a complement of a knot, a hyperbolic knot. Uh, but what I want to say here is that there are some examples which uh, are being studied, but not many, very few. So that it's, it's really uh, annoying because it's, uh, it's really, we don't know what, what's going on. So this for, uh, I ended for geometric structures. There is a, there is a wet side curve, which, is, which has this wonderful computing and understanding representations varieties efficiently, which computes representations. So this was work by uh, the, the implementation of, uh, of those things were due to uh, Kozelev, Rouillet, and Gorner. Uh, Gorner implemented on Snappy uh, the Ptolemy module, which computes representations, not geometric structures. So now I can go back to this uh, table, which, uh, which is not so bad. So here is a list of... Uh, of manifolds. This list are, are, are uh, uh, hyperbolic manifolds ordered by complexity. Complexity means the, the number of tetraeders you need to, to obtain them. So uh, they are, uh, the first two are two tetraeders. How many cusps? There's one. Sorry? How many cusps? Uh, this, so uh, all of them are uh, have only one cusp ex except the last one, which is the whitehead link two cusps. So here, you, you should see all the, uh, th this list was done with, uh, by Kozlev and, uh, and Rouillet. And uh, they are all the unipotent representations obtained by, by this method. So they, they are all here on PG, PGL3C. But you can see that uh, there are some representations which are in those uh, preferred subgroups of PSL3C, which give you a geometric structure on three manifolds, maybe. So uh, in PSL2C, there are all, always the hyperbolic ones. But you see that there are much more uh, in PU21. So you can think that CR structures should be much more uh, important in life, three manifolds then uh, hyperbolic uh, geometry, right? There is something wrong going on. So that's a mystery. Um, those in the table were unipotent. Can you imagine that it was uh, hard to get them? Now uh, we want to get the whole character variety. To get the whole character variety is a bit uh, difficult, and uh, um, this was done recently. Uh, uh, so there are uh, it, so, so there are three um, irreducible, uh, th yeah, three irreducible components. So it's uh, the the uh, character variety is um, uh, an algebraic affine uh, variety. And I'm saying that there are three reducible components containing irreducible representations. Okay, so this is a, uh, 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 was proved independently by 
Reusener, Munoz, and Porti. So let, let me make a drawing of, of them instead of uh, explaining the uh, technique to, to prove it. So So the, draw, the drawing that I, I would like to make is this, uh, is this one. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is one example. It's uh, essentially it's the only character variety of a hyperbolic method computed up to now. It's, it's very hard to, to compute. So uh, this. Um, let me. Let me uh, here. So uh, it, it's sort of uh, there are three components. I, I, I drew the three components. Uh, so, so those two are hyperbolic. I should. Do. So uh, there are two. We know by Thurston there are you know, Riley. There, there are two unipotent hyperbolic, and we know by uh, Bulger, uh, Bucher, uh, Yodzi that they are maximum volume. So I, that's why I, I drew them uh, like in the extremes here. And uh, those two. This this is one component. It, it contains. This row one and row one bar. So, in fact, they are, they are always couples, right? Uh, you can take the conjugate of it. And they have zero volume. That's why I, I put uh, here. And then there are two other components, and where the uh, representations are, so row three, those are the unipotent representations that, uh, that are points. So this is a picture of uh, what should be the, the character variety of irreducible representations um, ordered by some volume function. We don't understand exactly what uh, it's going on in here. OK. So the last uh, general result that I, 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 that the only general result that I would like to, to mention is uh, once we understood that uh, for the figure eight knot you have a character variety where each component is two-dimensional, we could imagine that uh, this is a general phenomenon. So we start with M uh, orientable three-manifold with a torus boundary. So compact means that, uh, uh, well, uh, I, I, it, it has boundary uh, here. I, I, I have to have a non-empty boundary. And suppose that uh, the representation is the risky dense. So it's uh, irreducible. And I suppose also that the boundary holonomy is regular, meaning that the centralizer is the minimum possible. Then I can say something. So uh, you take an irreducible component of the character variety, and then this uh, irreducible component has dimension bigger than uh, 2s. So 2s, uh, s meaning the number of torus components of, of the boundary. So uh, uh, th this was an important uh, theorem in the case of SL2c, where you substitute uh, instead of 2, 1. So let me, in the case of SL2c, you can read this ther theorem in, in Thurston's notes. Here you have the dimension is bigger than uh, S. So it's an important theorem because you, 
you want to make sure that the space of deformations is uh, non-empty. So this uh, allows you to do uh, den filling, for instance, in, in, in your manifold. Uh, this theorem is uh, uh, more general than uh, what I stated. So we can, uh, if you substitute n here, so you can guess that you, you get uh, n minus 1. Um, so let me give uh, a proof uh, of this. No, I, I won't give a proof of this, and uh, I'll stop here. <laughs>